which alone would not suffice in today's world. All the crazy warmongers and terrorists, anarchists and protesters, etc. could not be restrained with words and spirit teachings for the time being and be brought to reason. It would require, in this case, a special armed army that would have to comprise millions of men and which would intervene immediately in every single country and create peace and order where any rebellions, terrorist acts, and wars, etc. begin to threaten or erupt. This army would also have to be responsible that all male and female participants of such acts hostile to peace would be immediately and mercilessly separated for life within the scope of how it has been handled for thousands of years by you, that those who are guilty are moved to specially guarded and lonely islands, etc., men and women being separated from where they could never return back to society. Quetzal says that is correct. I also would have given you this explanation in reference to the peace combat troop. In your speech, you also spoke of terrorism, and precisely on this topic, I would like to make you a prediction, which refers to your home country, Switzerland. In Bern, so my calculations showed, in the year 1982, the Polish embassy will be taken by terrorists, whereby a smaller number of hostages will fall into their hands. This event will occur around September 6 of 1982, although, this terroristic game will cause no harm to human lives and already on September 9, in the course of the 10th to the 11th hour of the morning, it will find its end. Through a smaller detonation of an explosive by the police forces of a Bernese Special Command, which is carried out under the name Star, the police forces gain entrance into the embassy and, first of all, the four extremists, the terrorists, will be taken into custody, after which then, in the second place, also the hostages will be released. Because these events concern an incident in the capital of your home country, I made an effort using a time bypass, to monitor closely the upcoming events whereby I have made a very deplorable observation which refers to the acting and thinking of the responsible and enforcing personnel. The Swiss Federal Council man, Kurt Fugler, will establish a crisis committee over which he himself will preside. Now on the one hand I determine that this responsible person is severely religiously entangled and on the other hand, all of his actions paradoxically come from great insecurity while another factor relating to this is that he is driven by an unusually strong craving for recognition in his actions and words. This unique combination will lead at the time of the events to the fact that only great perplexity will prevail in the fight against the terrorist acts, after which a solution will then appear only much too late. If this responsible person would be capable of logical thinking, then just one and a half hours after the taking of hostages and the occupation, all events could be terminated through the same process that is first brought to execution on September 9. In addition, this cut fuddler also suffers very quickly from states of anxiety, also in this upcoming event, which is why he, in truth, is already for this reason not exactly a good fit for his post. Regarding the policeman that will be deployed, Similar negative characteristics are to be criticized because all parties involved only act because the commands are given to them, while fear blazes within them, combined with the peculiar urge for exercising power and violence. Their movements and their actions testified, in my observations, of their fear and arrogance at the same time. Billy says I know what you mean. You want to say that they will behave like small young boys who play in the analysts and who defeat their enemy in order then to place their foot into the necks of those defeated, while threatening the underdog with deadly weapons. That they won't beat themselves with their weapons across their proud swollen chests like gorillas and give a Tarzan scream of victory will be like a miracle. But comfort yourself with this I've already known these poses and practices with the Swiss police forces for 45 years because they differ from all other megalomaniac weapon swingers of all other countries in the world in no iota. They all are small, megalomaniac, and illogical young boys who have weapons in their hands to lift themselves up as gods, but they often behave worse in their thinking and actions than toddlers who are able to think a thought for the first time and who get to play with a piece of wood for the first time.
small young boys with physically adult bodies who think and who know who they are and what they can do. Quetzal says on my side, I could not have explained these facts in so much detail, but you were capable of this with your vocabulary. Billy says thanks for the flowers, but in the end, I speak with a vocabulary that belongs to my mother tongue. Quetzal says that is correct. Billy says well, what other pieces of news do you have in stock? Quetzal says there is still a lot, but before I speak further of this, I would like to bring the earlier initiated topic to an end. Billy says you mean you still want to explain something with regard to the worldwide free peace combat community. Quetzal says that is correct, I want to speak of it again because we began something with it and did not bring it to an end. Billy says more shouldn't really be said about it anymore, we have chewed through the most important things. Quetzal says it was not mentioned exactly what kind of highest leadership such a community would have to correspond. I think that it is important to say a few words about it. It would, thus, have to be taken into account that such a leader would be free from material ambitions, so also from self-righteousness, selfishness, illogic, and all other faulty concerns, which could lead to lust for power, arrogance, inequality, and preference for one over another or to other negative incidents and manifestations, as it is now the case, unfortunately, with all governments on earth, without exception. Furthermore, it is still to be explained regarding a necessary army, that this would very certainly have to hold a position of power, but in a logical force logis gewalt, which means that an enforced non-violence Jwartsum Gewalt Lossic Kate would have to prevail, in accordance with the creational laws. Billy says yes, I understand, but this might be a subject that those aside from our group members won't understand so fast because outsiders have no clue about what signifies an enforced non-violence Jwartsum Gewalt Lossic Kate or a logical force Logis Gewalt and how these work. Quetzal says that is correct which is why we should not render any more about it and should pick up again with the course of the things of the future. Thereby, I would like to talk, as an exception, about a coming event which is not of great importance in and of itself because too many such events continually appear and cannot be stopped because those responsible for these are not approachable about appropriate preventative measures, for their greed and irresponsibility are more pronounced and more overwhelming than the responsibility for and safety of their fellow men. On the other hand, I would like to mention this event because it will take place where a core group member lives, so in Foyficon where Hana resides. It will be September 12, 1982, at exactly 2.57 p.m. Kama when a large passenger transportation vehicle from Germany with about 40 passengers from a seniors association from Sindelfingen will crash due to security barriers of a train coming into Feufikon from Feroltorf not being closed and it will be torn like a rotten wooden box. The sad balance of this accident will be around 39 dead people, who are to be charged as death victims to those money-greedy and derelict persons who bear the responsibility for the railroad crossings. But also responsible for this are all those who accept assignments as construction firms and carry them out in order to create such railroad crossings. But also responsible for this are all those workers involved in the execution and direction of such projects and also responsible for this are the architects who plan such railroad crossings. But also responsible are the engineers, planners, organizers, and primarily those who, as managers of the railroads, order the planning and execution of such life-threatening crossings. Already for several decades, and especially for today's high-tech time, such railroad crossings in every form and on all roads and paths constitute a matchless irresponsibility and a criminal machination, as they do not find their equals on earth in a similar form, if everything is considered except warlike and similar actions. What the railway officials and the railroad powerful afford themselves in this count and not just in Switzerland, corresponds to legalized murder for which all those responsible have to sign who lifted or are lifting just one finger for such crossings or who produced or are producing even one thought to bring them into effect. 
Already for decades, such crossings in small and large scale should not have been existent, but ought to have been safeguarded by underpasses, by which no street or road would lead across a railroad track. That this has not already been so for a long time, for this, no excuse must be validated. Billy says what will happen is unfortunate, but maybe it will help the fact that the SBB Swiss Federal Railway and other railway companies at home and abroad will become smarter. Quetzal says unfortunately, that will not be the case, not even for the drivers themselves who, like the driver of the coach, usually drive on the streets with excessive speeds, without having good control over their vehicle. Were this circumstance not to prevail on September 12, 1982, then the accident might well be avoided, as well as the one in Monaco, where only a few people in a passenger car will be flung from the road in a hairpin curve, in which the Princess of Monaco is then located, namely, the former movie actress Grace Kelly, who suffers serious injuries from the accident, so she must be placed into a hospital for care, etc where she then dies, however. Billy says death doesn't even make a stop before these greats, because with him there are no differences. This sounds somewhat brutal, but it corresponds to the truth. Quetzal says it is accurate that it sounds brutal, and what you said is equally true. Furthermore, I know very well which feelings occupy you, in a sad form. Even when you speak so coldly and seemingly apathetically of death and of those who are killed solely through human fault. Billy says particularly in relation to this so-called human fault, I would like to speak for once. What do you think about this isn't it the case that a human fault always exists with such events, even if the technology fails? I think to myself, and that's actually also how I see it, is that a technical failure corresponds to a human failure and is, thus, an error or possible fault of a person because the technical maintenance is only poorly performed and also because the necessary checks are not fulfilled. On my side I think, for example, that even just for a car, that it would have to be tested and checked off from A to Z at least every 14 days if it is used very often. Quetzal says your assumption is correct, and actually in every point, also with the examination of vehicles because these would have to be subjected to a precise inspection after any longer use, even if they were only used for one or two weeks. That is also how it is handled with our aerial vehicles and other means of transportation, although we are, in technical terms, around 3,500 years ahead of terrestrial, still quite primitive technology. The experience has taught us and our ancestors that such and moreover very precise checkups are needed for each and every longer use. And since this rule became valid for us, there were never any more accidents, neither in air, at sea, on land, or in space, except when any security measures were ignored, which led the way to technical failure of the transportation devices, or when it came to foreign influences, of which the human skill and technology had not become masters. But such accidents took place during the last past approximately 2,30 years very rarely, and up to the present hour, their number only amounts to 16. Billy says man, so few accidents we should also have on earth, but on the other hand, it can be said that such checkups are hardly feasible due to the costs and countless vehicles. Quetzal says it would be quite feasible, if such a pronounced materialism and egoism, etc. didn't prevail with the earth people, together with the poverty of recognizing and fulfilling duty, and poverty of love for the next one brotherly love. Billy says you bring ideas which the earthly twits can still in no way understand. Quetzal says which they do not want to understand because their materialism and their personal benefit, etc. always perceive them. Billy says my son, you speak to me from the heart. Quetzal says the purest truth, it can't be any purer. Billy says even with this, the human of the earth does not take it very seriously. Quetzal says that is also known to me, and for that, for this earth human behavior, there is no excuse. Billy says I think so, too. I agree with your opinion. 
Quetzal says good, then I can now probably report further of the coming events, and in this regard I must point out Israel one more time, that after the expulsion of the Palestinians from Beirut, there will be no peace but instead, shortly afterward, new acts of war will already begin, but this time against the Syrians stationed in Lebanon where Syrian rocket stations will be destroyed by bomb attacks, after which these bombings then expand to the city of Beirut, and as always, the attacks will obviously be triggered by Israel. This criminal act constitutes only the prelude to another crime, which will be planned by Menachem Begin, the Israeli head of state. Similar to the case of the assassination of the Egyptian president Sadat, he intends to build up and execute the same intrigues once again. Even in this case, his criminal and murderous intrigues will succeed, as with the assassination of Sadat. Through Begin's intrigue, and through treacherous, hired assassins, an approximately 200 kilograms heavy and portable bomb will be produced in order to deposit it in a house and cause an explosion, during which time the new-to-be head of state, Bishle Jamal, will be there. Apart from this man, there are still another approximately 30 people who will find death through these intrigues of begin and murder attacks. The cause of this, to be anticipated, criminal act on around September 14, 1982 will be that this criminal to humankind and mass murderer will come up with the idea that he can, through this machination, let his army forces march into Lebanon officially as an alleged peace maintaining troop and a security troop which he will actually succeed in doing because no leader of the earth and no citizen will come to the thought that this assassination, like with Sadat, will solely through Begin's initiative and will and in cooperation with treacherous Arab Lebanese elements come to materialization. Officially, as with Sadat's assassination, on Begin's behalf, the treasonous forces won't be recognized as the tools of Begin because the performers act in the belief that they would only serve their organization alone, without knowing that their high-level personnel are in common cause with Begin in traitorous and intrigue-like ways. Thus, Menachem Begin will succeed in performing a new step in relation to his plans of country conquest without the leaders of the world and the nations throughout it having even the slightest idea of what is truly happening. Billy says this begin is probably the worst dirty swine that strolls on this globe presently and still for some time. Quetzal says that is correct because the next ones are still not in office, who are on a par with begin, whereby later, the worst national criminal and murderer will be Ariel Sharon whose swearing-in as Prime Minister will take place on February 6, 2001. Billy says and the leaders of the world are, most notably, straw dumb, because how else could they misjudge the actual machinations and plans for country conquest, etc. Quetzal says that is also correct because even after this recent crime, the world leaders will further aid and abet the plans and assassination attempts, etc. of Israel and begin without recognizing the truth. For this reason, I will still have a lot of predictions to make in connection with Israel. Billy says you will deliver your explanations chronologically about that. Quetzal says that is correct. Billy says well, then I still have another question, which is not based on this one nap leader and numero one criminal. You have spoken about the death of Grace Kelly, however, you gave no further information. Quetzal says I omitted that, yes. Her death occurs in the evening hours of September 14, 1982, where the accident will have already happened one day earlier. The reason of her death will be that an injury to the brain occurs, which leads to a hemorrhage, which will be recognized too late. That will be the main factor of her death although two further life-threatening factors will appear from the accident. Billy says a failure of the doctors so to speak. Quetzal says not directly, but only indirectly. Billy says what am I to understand by that? Quetzal says the princess will be connected to a life support machine, but this will soon be turned off because the doctors will realize after some time that the vital functions of Grace Grimaldi are only of a purely mechanical nature. 
Billy says you mean that she will be dead, but that the life support machine still further holds the motor life mechanism in course? Quetzal says that is correct, but we should not speak about that further because it is not of importance. More important are other events that occur only one day after the death of the princess. It will be. Billy says I have another question about this you mentioned earlier the name Grace Grimaldi. Is that the surname of Prince Rainier of Monaco? Quetzal says that is correct, but now listen to what will further happen before the funeral of the princess can take place. In Iran, the Ayatollah Khomeini, who has lapsed into insanity, will let his best friend and long-time fellow combatant, Sadeg Odzda, be executed by a shooting command of revolutionary troops whereby the probably most devout and most submissive follower of Khomeini's previous time will be turned off. His fate on this matter will arise from the fact that he recognizes much too late that Khomeini has lapsed to insanity and suffers from a pathological bloodlust and desire to murder, coupled with cowardly fear, so he unscrupulously allows all to be punished by death, whom he classifies for himself as dangerous. Nevertheless, this criminal incident, already on the 17th and 18th of September of 1982, is overshadowed by a much worse event in Beirut. Once again, a mass murder will be produced by Begin's intrigues, which should be and will be useful towards his plans. In a subsequent order, forces controlled by him will undertake something that again won't be recognized by anyone as the work of the Israeli mass murderer and state criminal. Through the state traitors loyal to Begin, the leaders of the Christian militias in Beirut will be caused to let their armed militia forces invade the refugee camps of the Palestinians in order to wreak an indescribable bloodbath and massacre among the Palestinians, seizing women, men, and children, and this will not find anything equal to it so quickly. And all this will happen under the protection and under the supervision of Israel, which will even ensure with its military forces in Beirut that the murderous Christian militias of the Lebanese can invade the refugee camps, after which the massacre will then demand more than 6,000 human lives. Only after the end of the massacre will Israel officially intervene and pretend that it wanted to prevent these murders. But in truth, the intervention will only occur to cover up Begin's criminal actions and, thus, wash his hands before the world public in innocence. The fact will be that this massacre and the invasion of Begin's troops in Beirut will serve only for purposes, primarily for further developing Begin's country domination plans, while the second reason will be to allow this massacre. Through the murder of Bishna Jamal orchestrated by Begin, it will be easy for this murderous criminal to win over the Lebanese Christian militias to himself on treacherous detours and accomplish his plans to murder and rub out the Palestinians remaining in Lebanon. The leaders of the Christian militias will enter into plans with Begin when he assures them that he will let the Israeli army march in for the massacre in Beirut for their protection, which he will promise and let it be carried out. When this murderous undertaking is then finished, then Begin will allow his army to depart from Beirut again because he will see his goals in this matter realized. Billy says a matchless murderer and an intrigued scoundrel. Who and what is this murderer, really? Quetzal says he is the product of a marriage disgrace and also a combat brother of the criminal Sharon who, in the main army position, converts Begin's orders into reality. Sharon is the actual army leader, and as Begin's combat brother, this man stands back in nothing behind himself. The fact of the reason behind the combat brotherhood of Begin and Sharon, however, is unknown everywhere, except with their parents, because only the parents of these two criminal and murderous elements know the secret of the relations between the two of them as well as their tendency, which they often pursue together, but which is publicly unknown. But enough with that because these issues are not very important, because what the future brings is more significant. At the end of October or early November of 1982 it will get so far, that Begin and Sharon will be recognized as the originators of the Beirut massacres, but unfortunately, they will barely be brought to justice, even when many upright Israelis will intervene against the two criminals, thus, everything remains the same for the time being. Then, 
from about the 5th of November of 1982, Switzerland, France, Andorra and Spain will be hit hard by unusually large and hard dry storms. Many human lives, animals, and buildings, as well as nature itself will suffer and sustain great harm, which amounts to billions of Swiss francs. Many deaths will have to be deplored, and not just in those countries. Even America and the Hawaiian Islands will suffer severe damage and human lives in larger numbers will have to be deplored, and in particular, California is to be the mentioned specifically, where tremendous pelagic storms will race over the land. Smaller and medium-sized villages will be destroyed as if they had been equalized to the ground by bombs. On November 10, 1982, Russia will then enter into a national mourning because on this day, at 4.16 am, the state leader, Leonid Brezhnev, will conclude his life, but unlike others, he will find his end peacefully in his sleep. His successor will be a certain jury Andrew Powell. At about the same time, the evil and murderous power of the RAF in the Federal Republic of Germany will break, because at this time the leaders of this criminal organization will fall into the hands of the police, primarily, it concerns the gang members Adelheit Schultz and Brigitte Monhaupt, after which then on the 16th of November, also the actual supreme head of the gang, Christian Kler, will fall into a trap of the police and be arrested. With the months of October and November comes the time when the Italian, Swiss, Turkish, French, and German security and police forces finally recognized that the Pope assassin was not a loner and did not just work for himself but that he belonged to a conspiracy and had accomplices. Billy says I thought, in accordance with your information, that he would work alone. Quetzal says then you misunderstood me because my explanations only referred to the facts of the events in the sense of what becomes known to the earthly authorities and security forces at the time of the event and for some time afterward. It may very well be that my explanations gave the strong impression that the assassin was an exclusive handler. Billy says I understood it in such a way, because you said that he actually... Quetzal says that is correct, but my statement only refers to the initial facts, which will be known at the time of events and some time afterward. Billy says then I misunderstood you. I was too inattentive. But go ahead and narrate of the coming matters. Quetzal says with pleasure. The month of November and the month of December will bring the earth into a dangerous situation and back into the danger of a nuclear war, for which we do not yet know whether we are allowed to take any countermeasures to avert this danger. The reason for this threat, how could it be otherwise, will be supplied by the American President Ronald Reagan, who, as a warmonger, is crazy enough to want to station new nuclear missiles in Europe which will displease the Russians and will even drive them to station death weapons of the same kind in the European region if Reagan should stay with his insanity plan. Billy says that guy is crazy. Quetzal says he is a very dangerous paranoiac and with this also psychopathically heavily burdened. Ronald Reagan is a great threat for the entire earthly humanity because he is not only a very vicious and unpredictable warmonger, but the actual, main man for the decisive point of a third threatening world conflagration, as I have already explained to you several times. He actually embodies this origin because through his warmongering, he produces crazy ideas in the heads of many earth people, which could one day lead to the third world war, even if the wheel of death should no longer be set in motion by Ronald Reagan himself. His evil behavior could hit future waves, which could become deadly breakers. Still other like-minded individuals have been at work in this regard, as it presently is and also will be the case at the time, and also their machinations are of significance in regards to an impending third world war, but never in the same measure as with Ronald Reagan, except later with the Bushs. As is known to you, there are seven antilogos who will be depicted guilty for the threatening world war, and Ronald Reagan is indeed one of them but the possible still incendiary Antilogo will only in a coming time reach his great power, which will enable him for this work of destruction. But there should be no talk of this now because the time until then still takes a while, 
and also, the mentioning of these facts is not beneficial because the earth human will not listen to the warnings. For this reason, we can deal with the interests of the future, which are of some importance for the people of earth, and from which he might learn that we indeed know the future and are entitled to prophetic statements even if the earth person has not listened to us thus far. Billy says unfortunately, I know. You are probably quite right that it is useless to talk now already about these coming things. I also suppose that the people on this planet can't be taught better even when they recognize the truth of the prophecies and predictions. But go ahead and continue with those things that you wanted to mention. Quetzal says I ended with my predictive explanations at the month of December, and for this month, I still have to give further explanations that relate to the weather and the, out of that, resulting disasters. As Europe will be without snow in this coming time, there will also be a privation of snow in many places in America as a result of unusual warm air influences, and there will even be famine due to unemployment. Other countries will be smitten with the heaviest thunderstorms and will not be preserved from natural disasters. Such natural storms will move all around the earth in December of 1982 and spread misery, distress, and death. To mention everything in their details or to enumerate the harmed countries would lead too far, which is why I only give this information in general terms. The turn of the year 1982 to 1983 brings not much of significance, but it might be interesting for you to know that shortly after the turn of the year, a great natural drama will be imminent on the Hawaiian Islands because there, a volcano again gets to outbreak in several and prolonged eruptions. Not much damage will result from this coming volcanic activity because the human settlements were placed at sufficient distances, thus, these won't be impaired. Billy says it would, perhaps, be interesting to know in some cases where and what will take place, as for example the famine in America, which sounds a little unbelievable. Quetzal says it will be a fact because this famine will arise in Detroit. In the country of Yemen, near San, Imdamar, a moderately severe earthquake will arise, which will demand many human lives and more than half a million homeless people. As another example of the time of December of 1982 applies a large expected landslide by torrential rains in Ancona, which will wreak tremendous damage. But at this time of December, something pleasant will happen for a change because Spain will reopen the blocked border of Gibraltar, which had been closed by Franco's power. Is this data sufficient for you? Billy says it is because it offers something concrete. What will, or about what will the talking people's mouths be when the volcano on Hawaii has erupted? Quetzal says different things will come from it particularly with politics in relation to disarmament but which is not meant seriously because all only want to overreach one another. At the same time, the earth people, being jolted through official reports, will be frightened once again because at this time, a new Russian atomic spy satellite will fall and move across the sky like a small comet. Billy says ah yes, good that you speak about it because speaking of a comet, I would like to ask you a question. Years ago, I already spoke with Semyaza several times about the destroyer, which must be a gigantic comet. Semyaza then gave me a lot of information in relation to this wanderer, but she was not quite sure as to the exact dates regarding the actual times of circulation, and regarding the years of appearance, etc. She told me back then that she was not precisely oriented about everything and that quite possibly, there could be errors in her data. Quetzal says that is correct because these issues are not in her field, and she has never been deeply occupied with them. She took up this information only in passing which she then passed along to you in a friendly manner, but unfortunately, she somewhat intermingled some data of importance, particularly in issues of time, whereby she somewhat confusingly intertwined different time calculations into one another. It should be noted that four calendars appear that are different and thoroughly divergent from one another, which Semiaza has mentioned to you in her explanations but has not explained more closely which would have been necessary for a full understanding of the issues.
in the right way, you should have turned to me for accurate information about this because interests around comets and similar phenomena fall into my learned field of work. But now, this shouldn't mean that you have been misinformed by Semiaza because that isn't the case. Her information reflects the given facts, but these were mixed with each other due to inexact knowledge. Billy says that is reassuring, but at least now, can you give me the exact information? Quetzal says our conversation topic is a different one, but if it is so important to you, then I will gladly be ready to give you the exact information. It is, however, necessary that I go back very far and also put the times in a single calculation, thus, in the time calculation that is customary on Earth. But it should be explained first of all that the current terrestrial calendar does not correspond to the true calendar because at the beginning of this new era, various time suppressions were made by people, which were never recorded. As is known to you, the new calendar is calculated after Ye Manuel, although, this calendar already differs by six six years, in the form that six years too few have been calculated. This is, by the way, a fact that is even known to those responsible for terrestrial time calculation, who know exactly, that according to that, the year 1981 must already become calculated with the year 1987. But apart from this six-year time demolition, another one comes to light, and actually one of forty years and four months, which must also be applied before the new calendar. Thus, between the time before Ye Manuel, which is designated on earth as before Christ and between the time after Christ, forty-six years and four months are missing which are not taken into consideration in the new calendar. Those forty-six years and four months were simply suppressed through various changes of power of the past, and also the data was changed regarding the rulers and their lifetimes and their reigns and was distorted by those who had to work on the chronicles and records. Such sources of error often only appeared because the records were made in cases, many years after the events, whereby false calculations inevitably had to arise. But through these false calculations, errors embedded themselves into the calendar, which do not want to be vouched by the earth people and do not want to be repaired. But now, if we want to mention the precise dates with regard to the destroyer, then we must calculate in these time suppressions and proceed moreover from the present time, whereby we must then incorporate the missing 46 years and 4 months that were suppressed by the chroniclers between the post and the pre-Christ time, so that practically, there appears an extraordinary and forgotten time between the old and new calendar, by which we can actually begin with the modern times calculation of the year 11 Ye Manuel, also known as post-Christ. Thereby, it should still be noted by you, as I must explain, that all the now following information is calculated according to the standard earthly pre and post Ye Manuel calendar. The following is an unofficial English translation, which was made by Mark Giuliano of Figu USA on 8-18-01. Billy says good, then go right ahead, and best of all, starting from where the destroyer originally came from. Concerning this, unfortunately, ambiguities also still exist. Quetzal says the original point of origin of the destroyer is unknown to us, which is why I can only give details on where it found its way into the soul system. Its origin lies in the old Lyra system where, from time immemorial, the dark planet called, Wanderer, at that time wreaked system-wide destruction and had brought the earthly moon on that course which led it to soul system and to the earth. A fact which may appear to many scientists of Earth as unbelievable, fantastic and as an unusual coincidence, but which nevertheless corresponds to the truth. The Earth Moon, many millions of years ago, was torn away by the destroyer as a fragment of a planet four million years older than Earth and was hurled out into space heading for the Sol system, where it was then caught by the Earth as a satellite. Meanwhile, the destroyer after the collision with the planet followed much more slowly the path of the planetary fragment. This is for reasons unknown to us and due to occurrences that we were never able to clarify. In this connection, 
We can therefore only employ speculations with regard to similar events that are well known to us, but which do not satisfy us regarding the destroyer and its course to the soul system behind the planetary fragment, which is why I would not like to explain our relevant thesis more closely although for us it seems to be the only possibility why the destroyer also found its way to the soul system so it cannot be spoken of as a coincidence anymore. The moon, the former planetary fragment, in consort with Earth as a satellite already some few millions years ago while its successive and much slower destroyer first penetrated into the soul system for the first time approximately 75,3 zeros years ago whereby it triggered a tremendous earth catastrophe. A large part of the earth humans at that time, however, found protection and survival because they have been warned by our ancestors regarding the coming of the destroyer and the impending disasters, consequently they built themselves structures like the pyramids and also other shelters. After this first appearance of the destroyer, it assumed an orbit that regularly carried it every 714 years back into the soul system. It moved through the Sol system on its course about 85 times before it altered its orbital path and orbital time in the year 12943.5 BC. For the first time through circumstances unknown to us, namely to a constant of 575.5 years. This took place by means of circumstances very strange and incomprehensible to us, whereby the first and second course and orbital period change did not fall on 575.5 years, but on 533 and 618 years. Having burdened us up until several months ago with an inexplicable phenomenon, the destroyer held a constant orbital period of 575.5 years, which it achieved, However, with the large exception only every third year. In between there regularly arose large orbital period variations of years, whereby the lowest orbital period amounted to 412 and the highest orbital period to over 670 years. Look here, this is the exact data of the destroyer's appearance by year in the Sol system, as well as its respective exact orbital period along with various details which still impart other values for you, for example, disturbances of the Earth by the destroyer and by Venus, which was pulled out of the solar system of Uranus by the destroyer and have been brought on a course toward Earth. In addition, there is still other important data apparent from these recordings as you can recognize here. Thus, if you begin here, then you have the year 14812 BC a time at which the destroyer still indicated the fixed constant of 714 years orbital period. Record this data now, then you will have it available any time you need it. Billy says how does it look regarding your time, if I copy down the data? Quetzal says don't worry about it, I'll tell you when I must go. Billy says thanks, I'll hurry. 14,812 BC, 714 orbital period years. 14,098 BC, 714 orbital period years. 13,384 BC, 714 orbital period years. Special event the destroyer hurtles on a collision course with Jupiter and disturbs its rotation whereby it rumbles by so close to the outer layers that an enormous storm develops, rotating and extending into the innermost layers. The mass of Jupiter pulls upon the matter of the destroyer and accumulates a particle and moon ring around itself which will persist for millions of years, together with the primordial particle and moon ring system already existent since around 4 million years into which the new ring will integrate. The gigantic storm that already developed in the most primeval times on the colossal planet has nothing to do with the destroyer. Concurrent with the passage of the destroyer.